Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and I just want to talk a little bit more um, about Ruby classes because it was one thing I left out in my Ruby Masterclass or OOP Masterclass video and that's just the how to quickly set getters and setters. So if you've used languages like Java, then you're familiar with this whole idea of having to create all your getter and setter functions. Well, if you're in JavaScript, you're not used to this because you don't have to. But the basic idea is let's create a class, class dog. Okay, class dog. We'll just we'll put an end here. And we're going to say that the class dog has a instance property of name. Okay, now the idea is this okay right now there's no way for me to access name okay and let's just say um, let's just create an initializer function def initialize name at name equals name okay so right now I can create a new dog so we'll say oh no not uppercase end end and then so we'll say sparky equals dog dot new sparky okay so now if I wanted to sit there and print the name puts so if I were to do a puts on sparky dot name it's gonna give me an error because right now by default all the properties of sparky are private Okay, so undefined method name for dog Sparky. So you see here, it doesn't recognize it. Now I could create my own getter function. So I would just do like def name. And then just return the name property. And that would fix the problem. Okay, so see, now it works. But can you imagine doing that if you had like hundreds of properties, all the typing it would take? Okay, um, there is a better way of doing it. Okay, and then I have to create another function for changing names. So I have to create something like set name. So Ruby does have a macro that's built in to the parent class. All classes are have this parent class called class. Okay, it's built into the Ruby spec, so that's just the way it works. Okay, but basically what you can do is you can use this macro ATTR accessor and then you just pass in the properties you want to enable so there's ATT accessor which makes it read and write it's actually do the other ones first so reader will allow you and then I'm just gonna pass in name and that'll have the same effect as me making that getter function so I'll still see I'm still able to get sparky but I'm not able to change Sparky. So if I were to do Sparky dot name equals Sparky the second, you know, dogs don't last forever. Um, see, he says I can't undefined method name equals like that's just not a thing I can do. Okay, so what I need to do is well. Uh, I could just do another at ATTR, ATTR writer, and this would be the same thing, but allows there to be a setter. So name. So if I do that, see now I can read and write, but that still took two lines of code. Or I could just do both by ATT accessor, okay, which is uh, just taking uh, Sparky, or no, uh, name. And that gives it read and write capability. Okay. And all this is is a function. It's a function that's actually uh, specifically a class function that's defined on the parent class. It's built in. It's, it's originally built into to Ruby. But you can build your own macros like this that work the same way. Okay. So let me just show you. I think I did do this in the OOP video. But just to kind of walk through this. If we wanted to kind of create something like this. We would create a function. And it would have to be a, cl a class method. So dog dot, let's say dog dot, you know, say name. Okay. And all this is going to do is puts, um, 
Actually, we'll have it take an argument. Just say the name. Okay, and def dog dot say name. Um, it will put. Um, or actually, we'll just say 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 hi. And we'll still take an argument. Okay, we won't do anything with it yet. So we're just going to put hi. End. Okay. Okay, so this is a class method, not an instance method. So Sparky doesn't get the say hi method. The class dog has it. But here's the cool thing about how that works. Let's say I inherit a class. So I create a class small dog. Uh, class small dog, I think it's like this, dog. Okay, so then let's say we create a property here. So, uh, you know, we'll say carrier, like does the dog have a carrier? Um, and then we have to create a new initializer. So def initialize. Okay, we gotta pass in a name and carrier. Okay, and what's name? Let me think about that. Um, we'll name technically the parent constructor, so we're gonna do that. So carrier equals uh, carrier uh, hat carrier equals carrier okay so we have to make sure we call the parent constructor so we will do super we need to pass in the name so that constructor does its thing okay at carrier carrier okay that's all fun and good and then over here I can use that macro that we defined above say hi okay because basically what happens is that when it writes this, it's going to assume it's a method, and it's going to assume it's a class method. So it'll look for it in the parent class or in the current class, and then just run that method, which right now is just going to say hi. So now if I run this code, let's see what happens. Oh, there's some errors we need to fix. Unexpected new line, super name. Think about this. Expected. Unexpected expected keyword and oh did I forget end here? Yeah I did. And and then I forgot an end over here too. Okay, let's see if we get rid of those errors first. Expected keyword end. Did I forget end over here? And and no, that looks all oh, like it all matches up. Class dog. At carrier. Oh, then I put a semicolon there for some reason. Okay. Oh, yeah. Why do I have curly brackets? Oh, JavaScript. What have you done to me? There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like I still had one more curly bracket that I forgot to get rid of. So now that we got rid of that, let's see here. Does this work now? Instead, it's going to freeze on me. There we go. Now we got some new errors. That's good. Given zero, expected one. Oh, that's right. Say hi. We expected one argument. So if I wanted to pass in the property carrier, I could pass in the property via that okay so then what happens is that just uh, uh, I'm just passing in a symbol that I can then use to call the property so let's just see here so I'm passing in that symbol now I should just work undefined method name equals where is this oh wait did I get rid of the I did get rid of the adder okay so let me just fix that adder right accessor Um, name. 
Okay, so now it's working. So see, we see the word high here, because basically when we read that second definition, it sees say high, it's going to assume it's a class function. So it looks in the class and the parent class and sees this say high function that belongs to the class, because see, we did the dog thing. That's what makes it belong to the class, not to an individual dog, but to the idea of dog. So we can call it. And then we pass the carry in, but we haven't done anything with it yet. Okay. Um, so then what we do is we can do puts. First, let's just put arg1 just to show that we're getting the argument. Okay, puts arg1. So see, now we get carrier because that's the argument. Okay. Now let's see what happens if we put at arg1. So we're accessing the property. Okay, well now we're getting nothing because I think this is occurring before we actually initialize the dog because it's happening at the time of definition. So let me think here. What would be, I'm uh, just trying to think of another example. Um, well, I mean, we could create a instance property, which would be at at, so let's just say at at cheese um, equals five. So that's, that's an, it's not an instance property, it's a class property, so that belongs to dog. So that property will exist before, so I'm gonna pass that in instead, cheese, and then we'll call it over here, and then I need to use two add symbols, so that way it knows it's looking in the class for that property. Let's see if that works. Okay, initialize class variable, arg1 and dog. Okay, um, mm, 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 mm. Now let me see if I add that over here. A little too ambitious by instantiating that there. Control X. Initialize class variable arg1. Okay, and I think what I want to do is probably use like eval. Eval. And then basically what eval is going to do is going to return at at, and then I'm going to interpolate the value of uh, arg1 here. So that way, what this does, it just takes the string and evaluates as if it's straight code. So this is going to put the word cheese here in front of those at symbols. So it's going to think of it's a, it's a property, it's an instance property called cheese, which let's see if that works. And that works. Okay. So then using this kind of syntax, and eval is not the only way I can do this. I think I did go through some of the ways you could do this in the previous video, um, the master, the, the OOP master class. But the idea is now I can create things, like I can create tools that my child class can use. So I can create like a base class that you inherit from, and it has all these macros in it. That's essentially how active record works in Ruby on Rails. It has all these methods, um, like, like uh, before action and all that stuff, that's built into the parent class. And you're just able to use it in this sort of macro way. So my name is Alex Merced from AlexMercedCoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.